Hi, my name is Maria Nikolopoulos and I'm an environmental educator here at Georgia Aquarium. Except I'm in the field today and I'm in an estuary system in Tampa Bay, Florida. There's no better place to see an estuary and there's no better way to see an estuary than on a kayak. So I'm going to take you around and we'll see how it goes. Now here we are in an estuary system. This is one of my favorite ecosystems to talk about. Estuaries are super important because this is where fresh water from the land comes in to meet salt water from the sea. This creates a mix of water called brackish water. Now, this is one of the most productive ecosystems in the entire world. About 75% of all of the fish that we catch, most likely to eat, come from an estuary at some point in their lifetime. Now, estuary ecosystems are so incredibly important for a few different reasons. One, they help protect coastlines from erosion, and especially here in Florida, they help protect them from storms like hurricanes. Another reason why mangroves are so productive is the fact that they are nurseries of the sea. Now, they're not just nurseries for fish species and shellfish and crabs and things like that. They're also nurseries for lots of bird species as well. Several different types of species of bird get their start right here in the mangrove trees, whether it be in the trees or underneath the trees or around them. They all help in some way. Now while we're out here, we just saw a double crested cormorant and you saw something probably unusual about this bird. It had both wings out holding them open and what it's doing is actually holding its wings open to dry. Now what's different about cormorants is that they don't have the same type of oils that a lot of other bird species do to help waterproof their wings and keep them nice and dry while they're flying. So the nice thing about that is that the cormorants are able to dive down into the water, they can hold their breath for a minute or two, and swim around in the water to find fish. Now other birds don't usually do this, they usually soar from the top, dive down into the water that's getting fish usually towards the surface, grabbing that fish and then immediately taking off again. So cormorants, like I mentioned, are a little bit different in the sense that they get in the water, swim around, catch their fish, and then they'll get out of the water and dry their wings. One species in particular that's really important for estuary systems are ospreys. Ospreys are a bird of prey. So they have very, very sharp talons and they have excellent eyesight, allowing them to look for fish low underneath the water. Uh, normally they look for fish that's closer to the surface. They'll dive down very quickly and then grab it and then immediately take flight again, which is an incredible feat. One of the main reasons why estuary systems are so productive is because they have things like these. They don't look like much, but these are oysters. Oysters are so incredibly important for filtering out the water that's in an estuary system. Now here the water looks kind of murky. But as you can see right around the oysters, the water is rather clear. Oysters are incredibly effective at filtering out pollutants in the water and other particulates. They take those particulates as food and continue to grow, and they're filtering out the water at the same time. There are three different types of mangroves here. Let's talk about all three of them. White mangroves, we can tell by their shorter leaves that are a little more rounded and a lighter green in color. They also have pores around the sides of their leaves that allow for salt to be released after it comes into the tree. This is a white mangrove leaf. This is a little bit shorter and it's a little rounder towards the top. But another way that you can tell is the pores that you see lining either side of the leaf. Now, as you look up and down, you'll see those are the little salt pores where, like I said before, white mangroves will exclude the salt later on. So those little pores that you see on either side are where the salt comes out of. Now those large prop roots help keep those mangroves nice and strong against any storm or wind or current that may come towards them. Uh, the way that we can tell those mangroves apart, if we can't really tell from the prop roots, is their leaves. If you look at their leaves, they're darker green in color. They're also a little bit more pointed than the white mangrove that we just looked at. The next species we're going to talk about is red mangrove. Now the way we can tell the red mangroves apart from the other ones is their large prop roots. Now red mangroves also have these pencil shaped seed pods called propagules. You can see this mangrove here is just starting to flower and it will soon have those pencil shaped seeds 
again called propagules. This tree right here has a couple of them coming in. They'll get pretty long, about 10 to 12 inches. So if you have a ruler at home, you can pull that out and see about how big that actually is. Now, after they develop a little bit more, they will fall off of the tree. They'll float around in the water, and then they'll seed themselves, they'll root themselves in the sand or anywhere they can find. And then they'll start growing from that. You can see it has a little brown cap. That little brown cap will eventually fall off after it roots itself and it'll start growing its leaves from the top there. Now this is also unique to a red mangrove tree. White mangroves and black mangroves don't have these pods. Instead they have different types of seeds. They look a lot different than these. And finally the last species we're going to talk about is the black mangrove. Uh, black mangroves are the taller species. They're also a little bit more olive green in color if you're looking at a bunch of mangrove trees all together. They're also a much more pointier type of leaf, so we just looked at all three leaves all side by side with each other. The black mangrove leaf, as you can see, is more olive green in color and pointier as well. Black mangroves also have a special root system called pneumatophores. Pneumatophores are kind of long stick-like features that stick up from the ground. They kind of have a cool nickname called Dead Man's Fingers. You don't have to worry about anything though, it's just what they look like. And it allows for gas exchange, especially when the tide is higher. All right, everyone, that's all the time I have today, but thank you so much for joining us for our estuary system today and exploring them with me. If you want to see some mangroves at Georgia Aquarium, you can see them on the top side of Tropical Diver. If you happen to do one of our instructor-led programs, some of those programs go up there, as well as our behind-the-scenes tour as well goes up there, and you'll be able to see them. Or if you're in the Florida area, you'll be able to see some estuary systems and mangroves as well. That's all for me. Thanks for joining me today with Deep Sea Learning with Georgia Aquarium. Bye!